Hey guys, D Mike here. Hello and welcome to Super Nintendo Sundays. Today we're going to be tackling the finale of Aladdin. So, for those of you who have been following along, we just completed the weird pyramid level that doesn't really happen in the movie. And then we do this level, which they could have done this part where Aladdin gets sent away by Jafar to prevent him from being able to come back and save Agrabah, but instead they decided to throw in the pyramid level, which wasn't in the movie, and then they skipped this part that could have been that part. So, great. Anyway, so we've got our final stage that we're going to be going after. I'm not entirely sure what this is supposed to be. I guess you could just say it's like Jafar's lair or something like that. So this one's pretty okay. It's actually surprisingly easy compared to some of the other parts of the early game, which I thought was interesting. I don't remember having too much trouble, but you know, for all things that we're trying to do here, it's funny that and I, I want to say like it's easier because it's like it's gameplay is easier, not because I'm getting better because I don't think that I am, but. I guess I'm getting more, my self-preservation is going up, which is good. So, well, as I say that, anyway, you get the point. But one of the things that I was trying to do in this final level, which I don't successfully do, I mean, I, I, I it's like I'm successfully unsuccessful, or maybe I'm unsuccessfully successful. One of those two. I'm not entirely sure. You'll figure it out. But one of the big things in this game that I've been trying to do all along without knowing what it would lead to was to accumulate gems. You get the blue ones, you have the red ones. I think the red ones, you know, are three. The blue ones are just one. And there are, I think, like 70 throughout the game because there's like seven stages. So 10 apiece, that makes sense, right? Good math. But there are certain endings that happen depending upon how many you get. There is a like one to 50 or I guess zero to 50 if you're really good like me. Then there's different brackets after that. Now, the ending that I wanted to have for this game was the 0 to 50 one because, in my opinion, it's the best one. I didn't get that. I got more than 50 because I'm just a try hard and I can't help it. It's for you guys, after all, but, you know, it is what it is. NBD. The real prize of getting gems, at least in these levels, is that I'm still trying to crack that hundo. Because when you do that, if you guys remember, you get an extra heart. So having an extra heart for the final boss is pretty cool. Now... I, as I say self-preservation, as I land on spikes, fall in pits, etc. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting about this final level and all of the things that you're trying to do is how like generous the game is, which I feel is kind of weird because you'd expect like the final level to be kind of like the gloves are off, you know, show us all the stuff you've learned and, you know, it should be a little punishing, but I don't know. You've seen the first half of it already. Do you guys feel like it was? Like, I don't know. And one of the things that I think is also funny is that, uh, you know, you get to see Iago here with the skull from Hamlet, it appears. But it's not just Iago, because there are Iagos, plural, as you'll see in a second. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how that works. I mean, this only seems to benefit my theory of birds not being real is that they have cloned Iago or you know as we set ourselves on fire and die but yeah the game itself is pretty I don't know I'd say generous it's not too punishing for this final level which I feel like I wish it would have been a little harder I say that as if I'm super good at this game I'm not but a little more of a challenge would have been cool I think I mean I honestly think the pyramid and the log flume level was harder than this one. This one doesn't really seem to whet my whistle as much when it comes to seeking a challenge. But, I mean, the game is still so well made overall that I guess I shouldn't complain about it too much. I mean, I'm not really complaining. I just, I just want a little difficulty in my life. Like, see, right there, like that might be the easiest scarab to get in the entire game. And it's in the final stage. So, I don't know. But, one thing that I'm super proud of, which you should all be proud of me for, and if you're not, then poo-poo on you, is I finally figured out the consistent way to get yourself two 1-ups. 
or two ups or tupes or whatever you want to call that. So when you're doing this roulette, there is the you spin it the first time and then there's that little indicator on the side that says press button, right? In between, it'll do it twice. It'll say press button. If you wait, it's like, hey, come on. Like, what is going on? Are you having a stroke? You know, wait in between those two, hit the button to stop it. Bam, two lives. There you go. Very useful, especially when you burn through the two that you did have on the final stage. So you just gotta be, you just gotta be careful a little bit. But yeah, that's a pretty tried and true method if you want to try it at home and make compilations of yourselves trying. Don't actually do that. Um, but yeah, so the, here are more Iagos. The game is, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure where these are coming from because we've clearly murdered the first one and then others pop in. I mean, there are more than one parrot in the world. There is more than one parrot in English. And, you know but I, I thought Iago was like timeless, just one. So I'm a big fan of this uh, flame layer that they've put, which looks very good, not just, you know, kind of basic. That's sarcasm, it looks bad. But there's another example of the game helping you out. There's another life. There have been two so far. So as long as you don't mess up dying like I did, falling in pits and stubbing your toes, then you'll be fine. But we just need to get that one extra gem. I'm not entirely sure why the game still feels the need to give you apples. I guess you could, you know, use them like I should have. But, you know, beyond that, you got bread, you got apples. You got that final gem. So now we got full, full hearts going into the final boss as we do. And then here, two incredibly difficult chain pulling puzzles. I don't know how, honestly, like, this might be kind of the ultimate test of gameplay knowledge. But uh, we're gonna let that chicken cook a little bit. We're a big fan of rotisserie, but it needs a little more time in the oven, so we'll let it be frame bro frame flame broiled and get ourselves out of here. Yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of one of the things that I think disappointed me about this final level, because I haven't played this game in so long, besides this Let's Play. And... I just remember it being really tough, but then again, I was also, at one point in my life, a very stupid child. So it's entirely possible that I'm just misremembering. So here we go. We have the final boss fight with Jafar. I don't know why I paused, but he's gonna throw down his staff, give us his, put his long rod out there for us to jump on. And with the sailcloth, it makes this fight a lot easier. You can hover down to avoid the lightning as it flashes out across the floor. And then he's also gonna shoot, he's gonna shoot horizontal and vertical lightning. So you gotta watch yourself. But if you dodge the first lightning, when you move, that's pretty much it. You don't have to go anywhere else because the game, it, the lightning is RNG dependent. So it's going to go to the right of you, center, and then left. So all you have to do is get out of the way once. Now, one of the things that's very frustrating about this fight that you might think is kind of innocuous are those bird pots. So take those out as you get the chance to. Like many Super Nintendo games, this one suffers from it too, is frame rate issues. So the more of these things that are on screen, the slower this game is going to play and be very difficult to manage. You might think, oh, it's slowing down. That makes it easier, but I don't think so. I don't think it does. It makes it more complicated. Now. One of the things that I also find interesting is that in this game, Capcom did not believe in the Nintendo rule of thirds. So there are no three hit bosses in this game. There's actually odd amount of hits for bosses. Like the first shopkeeper that you fight, it's like five. I think Jafar here is six. Then, you know, there have been other examples of that, which I think is interesting. But yeah, there, there are six, seven of these stupid bird pots on screen. You see how slow that is? It's like 10 frames. Worse than playing Breath of the Wild in the Korok Forest. And that was on a much more powerful system, so... Nintendo should be a little in Bale West, but we're doing okay. We only have one more hit to go, I believe. It's tempting to use the bird pots to jump up and try to get Jafar, but it's easier just to wait and use the staff. You can get more uh, height. But yeah, um, so Jafar just kind of disappears. 
And then we're very casual about it. We're like, all right. So he's gone. We save the world. Stage six is clear. I was trying to get the cool ending and the way to do that, what I've, I would have needed to get three gems and I got four instead. So I'm a big old ding dong. And, uh, and by cool ending, I just mean aesthetically it's cooler. I mean, it's not the quote unquote better endings are the ones you get with more gems, but I dislike them. So anyway, we're going to take on Jafar one more time in the ultimate final battle. They give you a little bit of rescue chicken to boost your hearts all the way. And now it's time for the final shake and bake showdown with Cobra Jafar. This is actually a pretty cool fight, but once again, still not really that tough. I don't think so. Now, I'm not a reptileologist, but I'm pretty sure that eggs aren't shot from snakes' mouths. I don't think that's a thing. And these kind of look like the, um, if you're into like arts and crafts. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I would say that I am into arts and crafts, but I know that I've seen those things that you get from like family members as like gifts. Like maybe if like your grandma or like an aunt or something around Christmas time, those Fabergé eggs, I think that's how you say that word. That's what those like eggs kind of look like. So Jafar here is going to be quite the, uh, he's got some girth. He's got some length. So he's going to take six hits instead of, oh, sorry, eight hits instead of the normal six. So anytime that he dips his head down after he fires his eggs, you can usually get a good hit on him. You can get up there above the sprite with your sailcloth, do that. Usually the tail will kind of sine wave all the way up. Use that as an opportunity to bonk him right on his head. I just really like the sprite. I think it looks pretty cool and menacing. I think they did a really nice job with it. But yeah, it's uh, not the worst boss fight in the world. I don't want to say that I cheesed it or anything, but I guess having the sailcloth kind of is cheesing it. But yeah. That's hit number eight, and Jafar is, uh, yeah, he go, he did, we got him. The game, I don't know, I feel like it's sort of like anticlimactic, but I like it, I like, I mean, it's a decent final boss, it's not super horrible. I like his aesthetic of having a tapestry of teeth at the top of the room, it's very nice, but Jafar is not quite done, he comes back. This is your... Not so fast, Jafar moment, but you know, the other way around. It'd be like more like not so fast Aladdin. So if you remember in the film, this is when Jafar decides to coil up around Aladdin, which is not really what cobras do. So the Disney reptileologist did not do their diligence. It's more of a constrictor type of movement. Cobras are just gonna get all flappy and bite you. But uh, yeah. So, Aladdin is going to use one last trick up his sleeve. Actually, sorry, Genie is going to have to help Jafar here, because at this point, the game doesn't explain this, but Jafar takes the lamp, and he becomes the owner of Genie, and then you now Jafar is also a Genie. But there is the caveat to Jafar being a Genie. He forgets one very important thing is he's going to get sucked into the lamp. So, bye. Bye-bye. Uh, that is the end of that. Not really. There's a, there's two sequels to Aladdin, so it's not the end-end, but, um, you know, Jafar is gone for now, and now we've got a nice little moment of Aladdin and Jasmine reconciling, sharing their love for each other. And now Aladdin's going to use his third wish. This is what I meant to say before. So here we go. He is going to do the ultimate sacrifice for one of his friends in a moment. So Genie is going to be freed by Aladdin. Ta-da! So I guess in Agrabah, in this setting, having freedom means that you don't get to have any cool wristbands anymore or something. Maybe those are supposed to be like shackles and that's like a metaphor, I don't know. But Aladdin gives Genie his autonomy, his independence to be free. And 
you know? So much altruism. And then this part is kind of weird, but I guess it's like a sign of the times type of thing that like the Sultan's like, hey, we need a new law now so that way Jasmine can marry Aladdin because there's some sort of like weird monarchy crap going on and you know now she's free to marry whoever she wants so wow way to be progressive Disney although that's probably not how the story went at all in like the real version of this so now you get a uh, a final wrap up I think this actually does happen in the movie too with Genie wearing the goofy hat please don't sue me Disney but yeah that's it that's the uh that's the final wrap up. And here's the ending. It's not the ending I wanted. This is just kind of like a an enemy showcase of all the characters you fight. This is not footage that I recorded, obviously, but we got some credits here. We have some uh, notice of Kamecha Boo Boo Boo, one of my favorite accountants in the Capcom Disney world. That's one of the things I remember about games back in the day is like, developers and people involved on the staff typically would use fake names or like pseudonyms because they didn't want to be as part of the credits. I'm not entirely sure why they did that, but I think their name choices are very silly and funny. So I really enjoy that. So yeah, I mean, why not come up with whatever name you want? No one's going to really like dig that deep into the credits of a Super Nintendo Aladdin game. Like now we have tall knob. This game featured a tall knob. That's fantastic. We all love a nice tall knob. But yeah, if you get 49 or less gems, that looks very painful. You, Yas, Queen, there's that. And a Scarab Mitsu. Anyway, I'm getting very distracted. If you get 49 or less red gems, then instead of this happening, the credits will roll over Aladdin and Jasmine doing the whole new world scene, flying on the magic carpet, etc. And I think aesthetically that's way better than what this is. This is okay, but I feel like this is just kind of like, I don't know, a little bit more lame. And uh, I tried to record multiple times where I was like, all right, I'm gonna intentionally not get as many, but I got to the point where I was like, you know what? This is a good, clean recording. We are looking like an absolute pro. I mean, that would've been cool if I could've pulled that off. I did not. I would've needed to have had more learnings from Professor F, but you know. You get this ending, hopefully it's not too bad. If you get all 70 gems, the game says that you are great player, I think. It's like a little broken English, which I think is wonderful, or English, whatever you want to call that. That's pretty funny. So there it is. Oh, I'm great player. So I got exactly 50 gems. I am great player. So thank you to me. Thank you to everybody who watched this. Hopefully you enjoyed yourselves throughout this journey in Agrabah with my boy Al here. It's actually the first time I've ever beaten this game, which is great. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed yourselves. All of the Super Nintendo series are kind of wrapping up around the same time. So there's going to be new content from different games coming up very soon. And you guys are all going to be a part of that. So hopefully you enjoy yourselves. Hopefully you enjoyed this. It's been a... A blast to record this game and hopefully you guys will tune in in a few weeks when the replacement game for Aladdin comes out. So thanks for watching everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Aladdin and Super Nintendo Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.